In the movement video, we looked at how you could use repeat and move to create motion. In this video, we're going to look at how you can repeat and move and also turn to create shapes. So I'm going to start a program um, and I'm going to begin it when I click the flag. And when I click the flag, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move around in a square. So I'm going to repeat four times um, because there are four sides and four corners in a square. So I'm going to repeat four and I'm going to move forward uh, 100 steps and I'm going to turn 90 degrees at the corner. And so I can see uh, what's going on. I'm going to put the pen down and so that the uh, square is cleared when I run the program again I'm going to put a clear tile at the top. So now if I run uh, my program what will happen is the cat will move around in a square and uh, it will leave a trail as it goes because I put the pen down so it will draw that square from wherever I position the cat so if I move the cat up there it will draw the square So nice and simple, repeating four times, got four sides, so the movement represents the side, and we've got the four corners, and turning represents uh, the corner. So what about, though, if we want to draw other shapes? Well, when you're drawing a shape in Scratch, and indeed in Logo, if you're familiar with that, you need to think about um, corners in a slightly different way. So um, what we're going to have a look at now is just a quick slide on how to think about the corners. So usually when we think of a polygon, that's a many-sided shape, we think about the angles on the inside. So for example when we're looking at a triangle we think about the angles on the inside, the interior angles adding up to 180. Uh, we need to think about it slightly differently when we're drawing a shape in scratch. So imagine we wanted to draw a triangle and we'll have the sprite moving in the direction of the arrow so we want it to go at one side to begin with now when we get to a corner what do we need to do well if you think about what would happen if we didn't turn we would carry straight on in that direction we would follow the dotted line what we actually want to do is come down the right hand side of this triangle um, to form the second side so the angle we're going to turn through is actually that corner on the outside and that's called the exterior angle so the the angle we're turning is not the interior angle at the top of the triangle here but this bigger angle on the outside well it's bigger for a triangle but we'll uh, look at how to calculate that in a minute so this is a slightly unusual way of thinking about angles but it has a very nice um, property and it's nice and simple because of this rule here the total of those exterior angles for any shape regardless of the number of sides is always 360 so this means that if you want to know uh, what angle you need to turn for any given number of sides all you need to do is divide 360 by that number of sides so for example if you want to draw a hexagon which has six sides the angle you need to turn is 360 divided by six which is 60 degrees so I've, I've said there that uh, computers can usually use the slash symbol to divide so we'll come and have a look at that in a second so if you go back to scratch if now I want to draw a hexagon um, what I need to do is I need to repeat six times so we always repeat the uh, number of uh, times that there are sides and corners um, and we said that if we wanted to draw a hexagon we needed to turn 60 degrees so we'll run the program now and there we go we've got a hexagon um, so we can use that for any uh, number of sides so if I want to draw a seven sided shape a heptagon um, then I repeat seven times and I turn well uh, I'm struggling to divide 360 by 7 in my head but what we can do in Scratch is we can get Scratch to do the calculation for us so in the green section the operators section uh, there's a selection of tiles for calculations we've got addition subtraction multiplication and division we use the asterisk for multiply and the slash for divide as you would do in Excel so if I want to do a division I'm going to use that tile there and I'm going to divide 360 by 7 so now if I'm using that calculation tile from the operators section um, all I need to make sure is that the number of repeats and the that second number there are the same and then it will draw me a polygon that joins up so there we have a seven sided shape if I want to draw a five sided shape for example um, five and five 
there we go, that's a nice uh, pentagon. So because that number is the same, and it's the number of sides we want, we could actually ask the user how many sides they want. So in the sensing section, uh, we can actually ask a question. So before we start at the top, um, before we re repeat, um, because we don't want to repeat the question, uh, we'll ask how many sides would you like? And if we ask that question, the answer gets stored in this um, sort of pseudo variable. Um, there's another video later on on variables um, called answer. So this answer tile here, we can use wherever we would want to use the answer. So in the repeat section, we want to repeat as many times as the user says. So we'll pop answer in there. And also, when we do the calculation, we want to divide 365 by whatever number the user has given us. So we can drag the answer tile and pop that in there. So now when I run my program, it'll say, how many sides would you like? And I can say three, and it'll draw me a triangle. And if I run it again, it'll, and I say four, it'll draw me a square. And I can keep going on, uh, so I can say uh, eight sides for an octagon, for example, and the biggest side that I know the name of, uh, the biggest shape that I know the name of, is 12-sided, which is a dodecagon. Uh, if we look at uh, what's happened there, uh, it has got 12 sides, but what happens when the sprite hits the edge of the area is that it uh, deviates from its path, and so the shape hasn't drawn uh, properly, it hasn't joined up. So what we, what we need to think about is the fact that uh, the more sides we have, because we're always moving forward 100 steps, the more sides we have, the bigger the shape is going to be. So the triangle is quite small. Uh, this is a lot bigger because actually the length of the sides is the same. But if there's more of them, then you're traveling further overall. So we could think about doing a calculation to make sure that the shape stays on the screen, stays within the white area. So if you think about uh, what's happening, so scaling things is a very useful technique in programming and in other areas of life as well. So if you think about uh, what happens, what we want is the more sides we get, so the higher the number of sides, the shorter the distance we want to move. So if you want the number to get smaller as the sides get bigger, well, the way you can make that happen is with a division. So as we divide by a bigger number, the, uh, the answer will get smaller, won't it? So if we divide by the answer, that will make the sides shorter as the uh, number of sides increases. What number do we pick for the first box? Well, I suppose um, if we want, that's too bit too big, isn't it, uh, dodecagon? So if a 10-sided shape might just about fit on. Um, so if we pick a number in the hundreds, so if we if we divide it by 10, we want it to be roughly the same as it was before. So we could try a thousand. So then a 10-sided shape we'd be dividing by 10 and give us the length side uh, sides of length 100 again. So if we try uh, that now, see what that does for us. How many sides would you like? We'd like 12 sides, please. And there we go. It, it fits on nicely. So we just move the cat down slightly so it's not quite off the top. So if we try some other um, sides now. So if we try the triangle again, then that's a much bigger uh, triangle than it was before, isn't it? So And it doesn't join up white because the cat uh, was just off the edge there so maybe the thing to do is make it just slightly smaller maybe 900 uh, divided by the answer so we'll try a triangle again um, let's try a square so each of these things is roughly the same size now because the more size we've got the smaller uh, we're making them let's try a hexagon there we go um, let's try um, let's try the dodecagon again um, Positioning, you might want to think about refining your program to position the cat uh, more precisely to begin with. Uh, let's try something a lot bigger. Let's try 36 sides and see what happens there. Okay, so even much bigger numbers where the shape is tending towards a circle uh, still work now that we've scaled them down. So just to recap, uh, what we've done is we've drawn a polygon by repeating. We thought about the angles uh, we need to calculate, which are the exterior angles, and the total of the exterior angles is always 360. So if we divide 360 by the number of sides, then that uh, works out nicely to give us the angle we need to turn. And we've also looked a bit at how to scale the shape uh, so it stays within the boundary of the screen.